All right, welcome back. We're doing another video where we've got uh, Dr. White again. So uh, what's the next sort of uh, step on the path if you're learning about these uh, different medications? Yeah, so we're, we're again talking about uh, additional uh, uh, medication options uh, in the background of, of early stages of treatment, lifestyle adjustment, metformin often, mm -hmm. uh, and then what, what should you do after that? Uh, so we've talked about a couple of different classes of medications. Now we've got yet another class we can talk about, which is a relatively new class to us. Okay. This class is an acronym. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Yes. To make so, it easier for me to pronounce. <laughs> yeah, so this is what we call the SGLT2 inhibitor class of medication. SGLT2. Exactly. Got that one. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So they work, again, very differently from any of the other oral medications that we talked about for diabetes. And in fact, they work at the level of the kidney. Okay, what does the kidney have to do with diabetes? <laughs> so it's a very interesting situation that we've managed to discover how to manipulate uh, with this class of medications. Normally, when people uh, have diabetes, they will take whatever sugar is in their bloodstream, it will filter through the kidney to some degree, uh, the kidney brings it back up into the bloodstream, thus perpetuating the high blood sugars. With this pill class, what we can do is block the kidney from taking the sugar back into the bloodstream. So what was the original, what's the benefit of a kidney putting the sugar back into your bloodstream after it filters it? So it's probably a mechanism to help maintain normal blood sugars in the healthy individual, mm -hmm. because if you kept losing sugar, when you're healthy, that could lead to potential problems. But of course, in patients with diabetes, they have much more sugar around than they need. So this mechanism doesn't necessarily help out an awful lot. So there's, it's an extra way that the body's keeping its sugar in that we're able to now somewhat adjust. Are we tampering with the levels that the kidneys would filter out, or is it just blocking that? Exactly, so what we're doing is we're really lowering the degree to which the kidney can reabsorb the blood sugar. The end result is the sugar goes out in the urine. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, so we often talk about it as people are peeing out sugar. Would you be able to prescribe it alongside metformin and alongside all the other ones we've discussed? Yeah, exactly. So uh, very similar to the approaches with the other medications is uh, we, we use these medications added to metformin. Uh, they can also at times be added to combinations of metformin plus some of the other pills. Um, so it allows us for a lot of variability in terms of options to help manage our patient's diabetes. The important part about this particular group of agents is they do work so differently from any of the other products that we have a very, very separated effect. They work so differently, so they don't affect each other in any way. Yeah, now of course they do have uh, synergistic effects, they mm -hmm. do work nicely together, and we do have to have considerations about the combination sometimes in considering adjustments. Uh, but this group of medication has a few other uh, separate benefits from it that maybe some of the other ones don't. Great. And are there side effects on yeah. the routine level? So, side effects that we have to discuss with all patients surrounding this particular group of uh, products include, uh, the, there is the chance you could get a little bit dehydrated, and many people do report feeling a little bit thirsty when they start these medications, so we encourage good water intake. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing that can happen occasionally uh, is because there's a little bit more sugar in the urine, it can increase the risk of a yeast infection. So patients need to be definitely counseled to be aware of that. It's not a very high risk, but it does exist. Absolutely. The other important part is if they are taking another product, such as the sulfonylurea that we talked about, or insulin, it can increase the risk of causing low blood sugars. Basically, the insulin or the sulfonylurea start to work a little bit better when you add an SGLT2. Okay, and it would cause lower blood sugars because it's cutting off a large source of your body's blood sugar. Exactly. Okay. Well, is there anything else that we should know about this uh, particular strategy? Well, the other benefits of this, uh, aside of course from blood sugar lowering, which is really mm -hmm. the, the very important part, 
is we do see some other benefits often, including a lot of people see a bit of weight reduction with this. Essentially, because you're losing sugar, you're mm. losing calories. Uh, we also often see a little bit of reduction in blood pressure, which for patients with diabetes is often an important thing. Goes along with blood pressure too. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, I think that there's one other medication that we're going to talk about, but we'll leave that for the next video. So, thanks again.